Math 151, and we are going to take a look at Section 3.2, Part 2. And uh, in that 3.1 lecture, I encourage you to start uh, to make a lookup page for yourself. And so we had some stuff that we put on it. I'm actually going to add some stuff to this now. Um, <clears throat> so last time we dealt with sine and cosine. Today we're going to deal with secant and tangent and, and those, uh, those trig functions. So let's get some relationships up here. Uh, a couple of Pythagorean relationships. You know, from from this relationship, you could divide everything by sine squared, right? So you'd get like this divided by sine squared is one. Uh, cosine squared divided by sine squared is cosine squared over sine squared. Those are x's equals one over sine squared. And just to point out, one over sine squared is uh, cosecant squared. And cosine over sine is cotangent squared. So notice that we have some relationships like this that we can start to build on as well. And the two that we're really going to pull on, I'll write, I'll write here right now. And just to point out where these come from, if I go back to here, I divided by sine before. If I divide by cosine, notice like sine squared divided by cosine, excuse me, tangent. Uh, cosine divided by cosine is one. You can subtract it. One divided by cosine is secant. So that these just come out of out of that trig relationship. Let's get some other integrals up here as well. Some things that we know the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the integral of secant squared is tangent, and we know that secant, the derivative of it is uh, secant times tangent. So the integral of secant times tangent is secant. So if I, we're gonna push towards u substitutions just like we did with sine and cosine. So if my u substitution is gonna be a tangent, I know that my du will have a secant squared in it, right? Like if I wanna u substitute tangent, I need a secant squared dx. If I'm going to u substitute secant, I need a secant tangent. And just a couple other ones that I'll just give you right now. Uh, integral of secant itself, just alone. Tangent. Just to point out that these are the same uh, natural log. If I had this, this negative out here, remember when you're doing logs, that's the same as, uh, as an exponent of what's inside the natural log. So this would be like cosine x to the negative one power, which is secant, which is one over cosine of x. So just to point out that this and this are the same thing. All right, so we have these. These are things we can look up. And you can you can derive this one pretty easily, just if you're interested, by thinking about tangent as sine over cosine. And it's kind of a fun exercise to use some u substitution to, to work that one out. You would let u equal cosine. You can always pause the video if you want to copy something down. So let's dig on in. As I take a peek at this, I notice I have secant uh, to the fifth power, and then I have a tangent x dx. So this tan x dx is making me, this is making me think of like my du's. So just tangent as my derivative, I'm not going to use substitute like natural log of secant x. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But notice, if I had a secant and a tangent, my u value could be secant because my du would be that. Remember, integrals go this way, uh, derivatives go that way. So let's do that. So let's try and get a single secant as well. And we'll steal a technique from last time, which is let's break up the secant to the fifth into a secant to the fourth times secant. So we could say we've got secant to the fourth of x times secant. There's our secant to the fifth times tangent of x tax, tax man, dx. So that's going to be my du. So I know that if I let u be secant, du is secant times tangent. Now I can do my u substitution. I have u to the fourth, right? Secant to the fourth power. And then secant tangent dx, well, that's this, so that's my du. Cool, one-fifth. Uh, plus c, and if I substitute my u back in there, it's one fifth secant to the x. Do another one. 
All right, so looking at the pieces, I have I see the secant squared in here. And think about that. Secant squared is the derivative of tangent. Oh, that's great. I'm set for u substitution already. If I let u be tangent, du is going to be secant squared dx. So let's do it. u is tangent. So du uh, is secant squared dx. So I substitute, I didn't notice, uh, tangent to the fifth. So u to the fifth, secant squared dx, that's my du. And I know that's one-sixth u to the sixth. And since u is tangent, this would be uh, one-sixth of tangent to the sixth power, plus my constant. Great. Okay, so straightforward, looking good. Again, we're looking for a secant x dx or a secant tangent dx. To do our to do our u substitution, and in this case we're going to let u equal secant. In this case we're going to let u equal tangent, and then we can just go from there. The rest of it is like manipulating this to a form where we can uh, where we can do that. So I have this tangent to the sixth. I have a secant to the fourth. If I had a secant to the second, the x. Then I could uh, substitute in u equals tangent. So let me think of the secant of the fourth as secant squared times secant squared. Got my x, got my x there too, got my x there. There should be x's everywhere. All right, so there's that's going to be my du. So I want everything else in terms of tangent. So I already have this tangent to the sixth in terms. Secant squared. Well, I know I can turn that into tangent by using one of my Pythagorean identity rules. So I'm going to look back over to my little cheat page, and I see that secant squared is the same as 1 plus tangent squared. So I'm going to replace that. So this secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. Hopefully this is looking a lot like the work that we did with sine and cosine. All right, and so I have my du. So I'm going to let u be tangent, and du then is secant squared. If I put in my substitution, I've got u to the 6th times 1 plus u squared, and then du. And let's go ahead and distribute that u to the 6th in there. u to the 8th, right? 6 of them plus 2 of them. So you have 8 of them all multiplied together. So this would be 1 7th u to the 7th plus 1 ninth. And since u was tangent, 1 7th tangent to the 7th plus 1 ninth tangent to the 9th. Why is that a 2? There is that. So let's take stock on this one. I could get a secant squared here, but it would be a secant squared times a secant. And that would just leave me with this errant secant that I, I don't know what to do with. You know, if I, if I wrote this this way, it gives me my secant squared, but that secant... Uh, I want a secant tangent. Oh, why don't I just take a tangent out of tangent and take a secant out of secant? So I'm going to say this is a tangent to the fourth of x. This is secant squared x. And so since I took one away from each of these, I have a single tangent. These are all multiplied together, of course. Single secant is going to end up being my, my du, the tangent secant. And if I don't remember uh, what that is, that's the derivative of secant. So I want everything in terms of secant. Um, so this is in terms of secant, everything else for my u substitution. Tangent to the fourth, well, let's see, that's, that's tangent squared. Tangent squared times tangent squared times secant squared, tan x, <laughs> secant x, dx. You notice how our calculus work is like a ton of algebra and then a little bit of calculus. So since that's going to be my du, okay, that's in terms of secant. Ah, the x got away from me again. So these tangent squareds, uh, I want them to be in terms of secant. All right, I'm going to go back to my lookup page if I can find it. Tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. Boop, pop, boop. So this is a secant squared minus 1. This is a secant squared minus 1 secant squared and then tangent at secant. 
just for the record, from this tangent to the fourth, if you wanted to write this as tangent squared squared, you could would then have this substitution x uh, secant x minus one secant squared x minus one squared right times itself. Um, you can start to multiply stuff here. I'm going to do my u substitution now. Since that's my du, my u is going to be secant. So my du is tangent times secant dx. So I've got u squared minus 1 multiplied by u squared minus 1 multiplied by u squared. Woo, and then all of this is a du. So now I'm a little more algebra. I got to multiply this out. So, you know, I'll, however you like to multiply these, foil it on out. Uh, u to the fourth minus 2u squared plus 1. Distribute that u squared into there. And now, now, let's do some calculus. Now we can do this integral. Seventh. Um, this would have been a 5, 1 tenth, so 2 tenths, which is 1 fifth. No, sorry, 2 fifths. Third. Now that I've got all those, what was u? It was secant, wasn't it? Yep, substitute that back in there. Boom, and there it is. So let's take a peek at this one. We know that if I take the derivative of tangent, it goes to secant squared. So I think I'm going to try and get a secant squared in this thing. Um, tangent cubed, I could think of that as uh, tangent squared times tangent. And tangent squared, oh, where's my lookup page? Tangent squared is secant squared uh, minus one. Lovely. I knew that. I've done it enough times. That I know it and I hope that that's something that you're thinking about is that you can um, you can look something up a bunch of times and that's the way that you that you remember it okay we have this these things are multiplied together so I'm gonna I'm gonna distribute that tangent into there and I'm gonna break this into two integrals integral of this integral of that And then this one, I know the, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So I can use, use that substitution, that, uh, that u substitution. So here I've just got the integral of u relative to du. And this one, well, I know the derivative of tangent. It's uh, look upable. It's this, natural log of secant. And that's minus, right? Don't lose that minus sign. We know that this is one half u squared, and u was tangent, so this would be one half tangent squared minus natural log of secant plus some constant. So um, your book has, just like the last unit, the last chapter, a problem solving strategy you know it's 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 a good idea to to take a look at it to get an idea you know it has these conditions um you know j's this power if j's even and bigger than two rewrite secant squared um so notice what what they're having you do is they're having you rewrite this so you get a secant squared x and then you can use your tangent uh, your u as your tangent for your u substitution because that secant squared x will go with the dx for your du. It's, this is what I was saying about like try to make a secant squared or try to make a secant tangent. I think really also just think about do I want a, a secant squared or do I want a secant tangent and make it for yourself. Make sure that everything else is in the in terms of the other piece, either tangent or secant. Now there's two uh, other things I want to add to our to our lookup page. I'm going to put them in the trig relationship spot. But you could you could put them wherever you are. Maybe have a third thing. And these are called reduction formulas. 
and they are very helpful. Um, I'm not going to prove them, but we'll go ahead and, and just use them. So if I have the integral of secant to some power n, I can I can reduce this exponent and it becomes this. So notice that I get like one over what the exponent was uh, times secant of two less than the power x times tangent x plus two less than this over over one less than this and then the integral of the secant of two less than the power of the secant. Uh, we'll do an example like this. I'm going to get the other one written here as well, the tangent one. And the tangent one's a little more straightforward. It's just uh, one over the power tangent, one less than the power. You know, that feels like, right, just taking the, uh, and so does this actually, right? It's just like taking a power rule. And that says uh, of x minus just the integral of two less than the, the power, the exponent on tangent. So if I had this secant uh, to the fourth x, <laughs> uh, dx that I want to take the integral of, Let's take a look at this. So if I look at my reduction formula, n is 4. So I could rewrite this as 1 third, right? 1 less than n, secant, that's subtracted to, uh, squared x tangent x plus 2 less than n, 2 less than 4. So that would be 2, 1 less than 4, 3, and then 2 less than. There's my x that I forgot again. 2 less than that power. And then I could work to break this, uh, this piece down more. And actually, I know what that is. I know that that's tangent, right? So I'd have, and I've got it. You know, like, if I didn't want to use the reduction formula, I could still get there. I would think of this as uh, secant squared times secant squared. Turn one of these uh, into tangent squared with one, you know, using the uh, Pythagorean theorem of uh, identity. And then I'd use a u substitution. I got the secant squared dx. So I'm going to let u be tangent. Okay. So you can use these reduction formulas. Those are fair game as well. Again, um, I'm really, really going to encourage you to develop your, uh, your sheet that you can keep track of things on. And hopefully you won't lose it. Like I have just seemed to have lost mine. There it is. Start to develop your lookup page. Um, and using that lookup page is really going to help you uh, remember things as well. Okay, give these a try. Message me or post in the forum whatever questions you have.